Hi, I'm Blair Gilbert here from MrHardware.com and Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores. Here to show you how to take an electronic fluorescent fixture that is really only eight or nine years old. It's failed. Guess where it's made? So what we want to do is we want to convert this fixture in the LEDs and I'm about to show you how. So here we are with this fluorescent fixture. The power comes into the business end, so we're going to work on that end first. Now, I've already loosened this up, so it's not fair. It's got some clips that clip the end cap onto the fixture, it just hooked on, snapped on. A lot of fixtures aren't going to do this. A lot of them are glued on or whatever. You're not going to get it off. That fixture is going to be dead. So I got it off. And then here's the electronic ballast that actually turned 115 volts coming in from your power supply and it, and it raises it up to whatever voltage it requires to run a standard fluorescent tube. We don't want fluorescent tubes anymore. The ballast costs electricity, the bulbs aren't as efficient, we want to convert this to LED. So the plan here is as we get into it, which I already have, the black, white, and ground wire, I've previously cut to make sure I could do this and so I cut them and I can pop the electronics out and I can see I have two wires these are called tombstones the ends where the bulb the bulb will go into a fixture with two contactors the two contactors go in the bulb and you twist them, they hook on to the end of the tombstone. In this case, they're built in. So I can see the two wires, so I know I can end feed my LED bulbs easily. So I pull out the electronic ballast here and I can see there are also wires going into the fixture that are going to the other end, to the other tombstones. So Looking at this configuration without too much work, I can either wire this fixture from the end or I can send a black to this end, I can send the white to the opposite end and I can wire this fixture shunted. So I could buy either kind of bulb for this fixture. Not all bulbs are going to go this way. So you take it. We're going to do an end feed so we're not going to go the other side of the fixture so I'm getting rid of the wires that go to the other side. Just like that. Here's the wires that feed this end. And here's the switch wires. I did find out that there was a fuse built into the circuit board. But seeing as how this is made foreign, and the fact that the fuse blew, I decided not to solder in a new fuse because I, probably something went wrong with this electronics. There's no reason to go into a fire hazard here. So this is gone. So now we have two wires. Go the left bulb and two wires go the right bulb and there's a switch. I can wire it to use the switch. If I do, I'll bring my power to the switch and from the switch I'll go to one each of the wires on either end and then the white will go to the two yellows. The white wire typically never gets switched and then I'll be able to hook this baby up. So I'll show you how it goes. When I'm doing a strain relief on a fixture, you can see how this is two pieces, and when you put it together and you clamp it, this will get smaller so it goes in the hole, and after it's in the hole, it's pinched against the wire and keeps the wire from pulling out. It's called the strain relief. Okay, to reuse the strain relief, you got to line it up and pitch it together, and then when you put it back in the hole, you crimp and push at the same time. There we go, we were able to reuse it. Sometimes that's pretty difficult. 
in every wiring situation where you have, I'm going to leave the ground out of this for now, the ground wire is going to get connected to the metal frame after we're all done, be the last wire I do. You always switch a black wire. So we have a switch here with two black wires. So our black wire from our power cord, we're going to consider that hot. Because when the cord's plugged in, it will be hot. So you always take and, and do the black wire through a switch so that when the switch is turned off, the fixture should be dead if everything was correct. Then the other black wire is coming off the switch. We're going to use that. We're going to these yellow and, and these gray wires. We're going to use the output of the switch to go to one each end of the tombstone. So one wire goes to one tombstone, the other wire is going to the other tombstone. We're going to put the three of these together with another wire nut and the power off the switch. So when the switch is on, this will all be hot. So power comes in, goes through the switch. When the switch is on, one of these tombstones each get a wire, a power wire. The white is never switched. So the white wire is coming in and it's going to go to each of the tombstones unswitched. So when you plug it in, the white, which is the neutral, which should be your safe or neutral wire. So can you see that? The white goes to one contact on each end. The black goes to the other contact on each end. And the black also goes through the switch. So I don't have to assemble this to show you how all this works. Even though this bulb says L and N, we don't have to follow that. There you have it. Simple as that. 110 or 115 volts is going right to the bulb through the switch. When the switch is off, we broke the black wire. So no power is going to the bulb and the light is off. So there you have it. If you can get your fixture apart, you know what kind of bulbs you need to purchase for this, you can easily convert your old ballast driven light fixture into a direct 115 volt LED replacement fixture. Quick easy tip from MrHardware.com.